Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the First Look Seminar here live from Santa Anita, uh, joined by my man, Chappie. Good uh, afternoon, Chappie. Georgie, how you doing? Uh, big weekend racing once again. I just noticed one of our local jockeys, uh, Flavian Pratt, just ran second in a race at Saratoga just now live. So he is uh, on the East Coast this weekend. On the East Coast, but we're here on the West Coast with uh, one of my favorites and one of a uh, fan favorite. And we always, I don't think we've ever laughed as much as the last time we had Craig on the show. It was absolutely dynamite. Plus, he's one of the best handicappers in the world. He has uh, made the uh, uh, cut for the uh, uh, championship uh, just about every year for like 437 years in a row. Uh, mm -hmm. Unbelievable. As soon as the the NHC, when it was the national, like historic, uh, You're aging him, George, You're back, aging you know, him. yeah, uh, he was, he was playing in it. He was, is incredible. He's been on in every one. He's fantastic. One of the best handicappers yeah. in the country. And it's great to have you on the show, Craig. That's good to be on. And, uh, with all that good talk to you, I hope I don't bounce here. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a championship hat on. He's ready to give some championship picks here on the show. And we got a lot of stuff to cover. Because we're going to talk about, of course, races at Del Mar today and tomorrow. Plus, Monmouth has a fantastic uh, promotion on Express Bet, and they've got a pick five with a giant carryover of over two hundred thousand dollars. And Express Bet's going to give you a ten dollar free bet towards that pick five. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, let's talk about today's races at Del Mar. Uh, exciting races going on, and uh, we're going to kick it off right off the bat, Chappy. Uh, you like somebody in the first race. It's a five furlong turf uh, dash. Tell me about the first race. Well, you know, I want to go over this race a little bit quickly, George, just because of the fact that on a normal day, even maybe a month ago or two months ago, especially, what were we calling uh, Phil D'Amato, the Lord the of the Long? Of Sod. The Sultan of Sod, yeah. Well, the Sultan of Sod has certainly gone ice cold here, and he – Speaking of Dave Weaver, he's uh, one for 31 on the meet. And normally, you know, back look at replays, and I would think that Gregory's pride is an absolute standout, and on paper it probably still is. Broke from the rail last time. I know it was back in January. Actually uh, got in some trouble on the turn and put in a, a, a big late kick and ran third to rock your world in Harvard memories. So comes out of a very productive race. This horse should be tough to beat. And the other horse he has, Cali Bay, uh, back in April, was actually off dead last and finished very well to run second to a nice horse. Uh, those are the two favorites. Probably the two horses to beat, but I'm just going to throw a couple horses in who had a lot of trouble just because Phil D'Amato can't buy a win here. And that would be the two Aventap, who actually um, had plenty of trouble last time out uh, the horse was kind of uh, off, was it was squeezed at the start, and then in between horses, very uncomfortable, galloped out very, very well, and uh, Hernandez takes over today. And also the four, Newport, New Park, who you can't see uh, unless you watch the actual replay on XBTV, which I did. But this horse also comes out of a very strong heat with Harvard Memories and Lincoln Hawk coming back to win. And this horse was very, very uncomfortable, throwing his head around for half the race, Kind of threw in the towel, but, but could be sneaky. Uh, but Aventap, definitely one to look look for if the favorites, just because Phil D'Amato is ice cold uh, at a big price in the first race, George. It looks like uh, J.J. Hernandez had his choice between uh, the D'Amato and, uh, and uh, Aventap, and he went with Aventap. So that's a good sign for sure, and uh, certainly a nice bullet work. Uh, Aventap's got a big chance, but like you said, the Sultan of Saad is certainly – uh, do to do, do to uh, get some winners soon, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he won with Gregory's Pride again. First time Lasix, but uh, he is ice cold. And uh, Mark Glatt, he's winning at uh, you know twenty percent, so certainly he's pretty hot right now in that first race. Uh, let's go to race number four. In race number four, uh, we've got a uh, a uh, so a runner that that Craig likes. They're going a mile on the turf. And uh, in this race, number twelve, so much happy is out. How do you like? Uh, how do you like the fourth race at Del Mar, uh, Craig? Well, I got this one. I got. I'm with uh, Sugary, number eight, and uh, it's a wide open race. You see, six to one on the morning line. Now, on that March twelfth race, 
the rails were out 30 feet. Those rails were out 30 feet that race. And uh, he had a wide trip. And it's always tough to win uh, when you got a wide trip there. Now he goes to July 3rd at La Salle. And he, he got boxed in. I remember he got, I watched the tape. He got boxed in uh, turning for home. And he, he could have did better there. Now you also look at the turf. Del Mar, eight starts for the turf. He's won three of them. So you know you can win, win on the turf there. And uh, and now here's a key right there. December 10th, if you're looking at your form right now, he ran at La Salle, then he went back on the turf at Santa Anita, and he won by three lengths. So that dirt-to-turf uh, move might be a positive, too, and we're getting six to one value. Yeah, number eight, Sugary in the fourth. Sugary, uh, he gets uh, Abel Cedillo, and Cedillo, uh, certainly one of our uh, favorites here as uh, Cedillo – is uh, running a lot with our express bet uh, colors. And don't forget, whenever uh, he wins a race, uh, somebody's going to get 100 bucks. So uh, definitely behooves you to bet uh, via express bet. So if Cedillo does good with sugary, it might turn into money, uh, some sugar money for you as well. Uh, you know, really nice, uh, nice runner there. Marty Jones uh, is doing well with limited starts and uh, certainly he's got a chance. You can start to pick three in the fourth. And and the pick three in the sixth, you got somebody like in the sixth as well, Craig. Yes, I do. I don't we have a chappy like some of the fifth? Well, I was just going to give out. A, oh, a, a, oh, the fifth, right? Chappy yeah, yeah but he's got he's got our middle of the pick three. He's got that's our middle. Right. Of let's, let's get that middle, chappy. Once again, I'm I'm, I'm the, the horse clearly to beat is the the nine Connie Swingle, another horse for Phil D'Amato, second time starter, uh, was bet as the morning line favorite first time out. The horse who uh, this horse, this Connie Swingle was steadied very hard coming into the far turn, lost all momentum, and then was gaining on the winner who actually Drizella, who came back to lose a nose in the stake race yesterday. So uh, another horse to beat for Phil D'Amato. Now, if you want to try to beat that horse, the first time starter, the five big novel, uh, another. XBTV. It always pays to watch these works. This horse is very, very fast out of the blocks. Last time I, I, I gave a horse out that I love first time out, it missed the break by about five lengths. I hope I don't mush it again. But uh, I think Big Novel could give the nine a run for his money. Uh, this this filly has got a lot of early gas and could upset uh, uh, an ice cold Phil D'Amato. Big Novel got a, a B on the workout reports, and uh, that's the best uh, uh, I get workout a B plus. of all. And uh, you look at his workouts just steadily. Uh, fifth best of 115. Fifth best of 90. Uh, first best of 28. So Big Novel, you got Rispoli, and with uh, Pratt out of town. Uh, visually, <laughs> visually very impressive, very fast horse. But Connie Swingle uh, certainly looked good as well, and D'Amato – uh is is due you know you see some trainers and you go oh wow he's only hitting at uh, uh what is he currently hitting at three percent he is not a three percent trainer he's gonna break out of that and he's gonna break out in bunches so keep an eye on phil d'amato now let's get to your race number uh race number uh six uh craig well i'm gonna go we're talking about trainers i mean ron elliston turned stupid this year and uh he's one for 43 the guy's a guy's a great trainer He's had seven, seven starts this meet. Then when he's, at least he had a second, one second and two thirds. So the, three of them were running good, uh, running good. So that at least, obviously, I'm looking at race trackers. Because, uh, there's all three of us right here. We're race trackers. And yep. number nine, Bravo takes them out because Pratt's out of town. It's not like they're throwing Pratt out, but he's uh, picking up the mount here. He's going up a little class. And his last, some, uh, his last start, he had trouble and he still, Still got a, got second there. He's moving uh, moving up a little. He had a wide trip uh, on the TV. Had a wide trip and and that mile mile was a mile and eighth. I think it was a little too long for them. The mile and eighth. Yeah, I think one mile be sued him because I watched the tape at a, at the one mile point he had the lead. So he lost it at the last eighth of a mile. And two back um, seems the. He was blocked to the two back in the post. But anyways, race trackers, the value again, with a four to one in a wide open race in the number race number six. Bravo's look pretty good uh, riding over here. Chappie, I, 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 he's, he's won some races uh, and uh, he's making the, uh, you know, 
the best of his mounts. He's doing. He's, he's been looking pretty good. Yeah, he has, and I think you know, as we know, any circuit, but we know the West Coast. It takes some time to get into some of these barns, and no matter how good you are, it doesn't matter. It's amazing, but uh, he's doing well with his stock. As is Kyle Frey, who's been very impressive. Very impressive. Um, yeah, and I think uh, Jersey Joe could be here to stay, and, and from what I'm hearing, Kyle Frey could be here to stay. Well, I'll tell you that, Kyle Frey, he ran, he ran my best bet of the meet so far. Clem Levine, he came, he came close. I thought it was set up for him, and boy, what a great ride he gave that horse. Naturally, a one because it was a great ride, but uh, yeah. I like that horse the best of the whole meet so far. He really, uh, he has in, impressed me. Uh, no, no question uh, about that. Um, race number seven is the uh, uh, big race of the day, the Sorrento Grade Two, two hundred thousand dollar purse. You got some uh, really nice two year olds in here, and uh, I think we uh, both of you guys looked at this race. Uh, let's start with you, Craig. Uh, six furlongs, some youngsters in here that look pretty good. Who did you like? Well, I'm taking the obvious. Uh, this race, the uh, Smash Ticket was very impressive, winning last time. He was geared down. The jockey was looking around, see if anybody else was coming. And it was uh, just a, a great race on that race. And the horse he beat came back and ran third in a stakes race. The horse that beat him at, La, at Lone Star came back and ran a stakes race at Churchill and ran third. He'll be, he'll be, he'll be the favorite, and he's no secret. And uh, maybe uh, let's see who Chappie's got. No, you know what? I'm, I'm with you, Craig. I mean uh... – I did watch Elm Drive, who was who was impressive at uh, Low Sal, but Smash Ticket was very impressive, and really, Smash Ticket actually broke a tad awkwardly, and 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 kind of rushed up, and for a second, Raspoli was a little uncomfortable, and then once he settled in, this horse just took off like a rocket ship, and uh, I think should be very tough to beat. Going to be a short price, but sometimes you have to take short prices. Yeah, you take the, what they uh, give you. Right. Yeah, the two that you looked at certainly are going to get most of the action. Uh, smash ticket. You look at the first race at Lone Star. Uh, behind them, nothing but comeback winners. Uh, comeback winner, comeback winner. Certainly a key race that he finished uh, uh, second in and just demolished with a wonderful, both, in fact, both races, great buyer numbers, great thoroughgraph numbers, and smash ticket. Uh, it probably won't be three to five because, as you said, Elm Drive is certainly going to get money and and, and certainly could win. Uh, looked fan phenomenal for Phil D'Amato, but uh, a pretty interesting race. What's really interesting is if you go to Express Bet, they got a great promotion because over there at uh, at uh, uh, Monmouth, at uh, excuse me, uh, what is it, Monmouth? Monmouth. At Monmouth, the they got five. a uh, pick five carryover over two hundred thousand dollars, and in, uh, if you sign up and and uh, you know uh, get in. You can get a ten dollar free bet towards that pick five, and it's a it's a big one. Craig, you looked at it pretty uh, uh, hard. Take us through the pick five at Monmouth today. Well, I uh, looked at it. I looked at it, and uh, and I got got what I got. Now the pick five today is starts about two something uh, our time, and uh, they only have six races, and it's the second through the six. Now the first though, the five to two shot called Jersey Jewel. I'm gonna fade this horse. I think he might just be a mud horse. He's five to two on the line. And the jockey Taurus is 0 for 41 in the last 30 days there. So I'm gonna fade that one. I came up with nothing I came up with, but I think he'll be the favorite anyways, is the five, Alta Vito. And what I need here in this race, I need uh, some speed because uh, he's gonna be closing. And if I get the one, three, and one more fa fast forward, one, three, six, if they go out there, uh, it'll set me up for nicely for a nice run run at the finish. Now, since I, the five is my top horse, but the eight horse is an interesting horse. He was running all mile races, and then the last three races he went to sprinting. Now, the sprinting, he, he's won all three. He's three for three sprinting. He's got a little layoff. He's coming up fresh. He's won three. Uh, you can look mama 14 times, three of them, but the, the turf race that the sprinting back is, and he's a closer too. So if the five comes, I hope the eight comes too, and I'm going to be too deep in that race, five over the eight. I love the uh, the jockey change on the five to uh, Lopez, who's crushing it over there, almost 30%. And 
And uh, I think that's a major uh, upgrade in jockey. And certainly this one uh, has a great style. So Alta Velocidad, high velocity in the second. Let's move to the third. Uh, it's Alta. Okay. And another, another tip on Mammoth. Any any jockeys that are like one for 40 or one two for something, because there's no whipping. So you need experience. Uh, you look at the top of the stand, take the top 10% of the jockeys up on the top. I really believe they know what they're doing with uh, no whipping, and they got it. They got it down. There's some experience there. Some people, some of the jockeys, if you see these one or two for fifty jockeys, I just can't play them because I don't. Not that they're a bad jockey, but just the situation. I think uh, it calls for that type of jockey that knows how to ride without a whip. That said, race three, I'm going to go. I think there's three horses there: the three, four, and eight. The eight, the four is going to be the favorite. <laughs> But you always want to you always want to beat the favorite in a pick five because uh, otherwise, come favorite favorite, you're just going to lose your money. So you need some horses coming. So I'm going to go in that race four, three, eight. The f the three horse, the four horses, what it is? He's won four times at Mama, four for four. There's not saying anything. Now the three horse, he's zero for seven on the turf. So we're getting so who knows? They might just give him a prep for that race, putting him on the turf, hoping uh, setting up for this race here. And the eight horse, uh, he's a, he can go distance, hard spun horse. So I am four over the three and the eight in the third race. Lopez gets on a uh, wild banker in the, certainly, uh, you know, that last race is a throw out on the grass. He's certainly better. He's going looking for uh, uh, four out of five on the dirt. So certainly wild banker has got a big shot at a nice price. Uh, right, moving so on uh, race number four in that pick five sequence. The race for uh, number four. I'm going. My top horse is going to be the five. I don't even know. I don't think he's the favorite. The favorite is going to be the three, but I don't know much about that horse. But I'll stick with my horse. The first time at uh, at Monmouth on June 25th, you see the the rider got lost. The rider right at the rail, and uh, Navarro didn't want to ride it the next time. So Mr. Diaz picked up the mount and won easy. I mean easy. It was. Uh, just a race that, that set up for him, and he closed, and he won, won good. And he's coming back. He's dropping to, to 75. Mr. Potts there is a heck of a good trainer. He wins a lot of races. So I think uh, this horse can come right back. My other horse in the race where I'll be too, too deep of will be the four horse, Porta Vita. And the only reason I landed on this one is the two horse was scratched. Missed the pot of gold. And now that was the other speed horse. So I'm looking at a lone F right here. The four could be a, easily a lone F. And uh, he ran twice. You see what happened. He did a lone F at uh, June 21st at Parks. He just cleared the field. So the four horse will be my second horse. Be the five over the four. All right. Uh, five certainly looked good winning last time out in that uh, fourth race. Uh, two races left in the uh, pick five sequence that, again, a big, huge carryover plus express bet is going to give you a free $10 bet towards that play. Just got to uh, just register for that bet. Race number five, they're going to mile and 70 yards. What do you like? Well, the fifth race, the fifth race there, it's a wide open affair. I'm just going to either got to go all or I'm just going to take a chance. I'm going to single number six, Country Miles. Country Miles uh, yeah, just went, missed last time six. out. Yeah, he closed. He closed well, almost won. Sanchez is is still on the mount, and um, if, uh, if the, I'm hoping the pace sets up for him, and uh, it's a like I said, a wide open race, and I'm going to stick with the country miles, and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, Michael Sanchez was riding at uh, Parks, and uh, he's trying to make a move, and certainly looked good at Parks, and uh, very capable jockey. Right, uh, last race of the uh, of the pick five sequence. They're going on the turf five furlongs. Who's your anchor uh, in the uh, anchor leg of the pick five? This race is wide open. I just suggest you everybody they can handicap themselves, and uh, you got horses uh, uh, favorites dropping and this and that. You you guys can pick yourself. It's a wide open race. Take as many as you can in the f bottom race. You know, George. One thing I like about Craig, uh, you know, the way he's structuring that ticket I, li I like to do as well as first of all obviously he's got opinions but he's taken a stand 
in a wide open race and singling a six to one shot and too many people single the, the three to five somewhere. And obviously sometimes, like Craig said earlier, you take what they give you and sometimes there's just a free square. But uh, uh, we're, we're going to come up later uh, when we talk about Del Mar in a second tomorrow that uh, I did that exact thing when I was a couple weeks back and that horse is running back today. But it's always good to take a stand. Sometimes it bites you like this one did to me, but but uh, that's the ones where you hit and you hit big. So I like the play. Yeah, really nice uh, nice play. And uh, certainly uh, if, if you hit that it's with that carryover going in, uh, it's worth a bet and make sure you, you play it uh, via express bet. Right, I, think the pool will be a, I think the pool will be a million dollars today yeah. at least. I think there'll be a million men in the pool, so there's quite a, quite a value. And um, let's see, let's see what happens. Now right, let's to move to tomorrow. We got uh, a lot of a lot of uh, races tomorrow. Uh, Ten big races, and while Pratt's away, the rest of the colony will play. And uh, Pratt obviously doing good at uh, Saratoga, but this is a this is a chance for the other guys uh, here to to uh, start making some moves. And uh, we saw, like you mentioned, Kyle Frey is making some moves. Uh, he certainly looked look really, really good. And uh, hopefully some of these other guys are going to try to take advantage of the fact that uh, that he's out of here. Race number two, uh, Craig, it's a mile and a 16th on the turf. It's a part of the early pick five. Starts the early pick four. Who do you like in race number two? Well, I'm going on the favorite. The favorite, uh, like a they're going to give us what they're going to give us. I think the four is going to be a, a legitimate favorite there. He's got first time Lasix. He uh, closed on the race. Now, the two and the four both ran together in that race. And the uh, two was uh, eight to one. And uh, for this one, they let off at 26 to one. And the four to me ran a much better race than the two. And obviously the line maker believes that too, because he made it five to two and he made the two horses seven to two this race. So, you know, no, no secrets. I think the horse's uh, turf, he, uh, he wants the turf, and the extra distance is not going to hurt him, and he ran big. Uh, the outside, the price horse would be the nine. Preacher preacher Roar for, uh, from from Georgia. And <laughs> this horse, the, 19, the mare, was a 19% turf winning router. So uh, on bread. He's bred uh, like 19% of the horses she bred have uh, won wow. on the turf. So that's, that's good about me. And Miss Jessica has turned into a – usually you have to uh, – years of experience to be a great turf turf jockey rider. But she's proven that she's going to win on the jockey, especially at Santa Anita. She won a lot of those sprints, but she got those horses out on those sprint races, those five furlongs, six furlongs. But I also see her win some routes on the turf. So I, I, I'm, I have no fear when putting her on. The blinkers go on this race. And so that's my price for the four over the nine in the second. Chad, be a question for you. Uh, the two and the four come out of the same race. The two was, you know, a little bit well back at eight to one. Uh, the four ignored at uh, over 25 to one. But the four looked much better than the two. Was that an aberration? What do you, what do you see? Or how do you read that? Uh, I do think you think he's going to regress to a 25 to one shot again, or they just missed, you know, uh, the public just got it wrong. But, uh, you know, a lot of times I've seen a long shot do great. You go, wow. But then he reverts back to just being a long shot. What do you, how do you see that? I think a couple of reasons here in this race, first of all, the, the two had already ran a couple of good races. Um, you know, a couple thirds. So was in the money ran third to against Madone. who's very highly regarded first time out. Queen Goddess was making her first start, and Michael McCarthy a isn't exactly known to get him cranked up when first time out, and it's very difficult to go a mile on the turf and win first time out. And I told Craig in our pre-show meeting that I hadn't looked at anything. Believe it or not, the only replay I had watched last night was of Queen Goddess. So I did actually see the replay of that race, and that horse actually had – I, I'm not sure if it was greenness or what, but that horse act, had some trouble late and was really flying and, and dipped down to the inside and was motoring and, and uh, 
flying late and galloped out very strongly. So I expect Queen Goddess to move up quite a bit. And I, I agree with Craig wholeheartedly here. Uh, plus getting first time Lasix, that can hurt. Uh, certainly uh, one of the ones that have to be used in the early pick five. But now let's concentrate on the uh, later races. Let's skip all the way to uh, race number eight. And in uh, race number eight uh, here in a, in a, uh, a big day uh, tomorrow at uh, Del Mar, we got some uh, some nice runners. They're going a mile and a 16th on the turf. Uh, Chappie, how'd you see race number eight? Okay, so this is one of these races where I remember when we talked about singling a six, seven, eight to one shot, and sometimes right. it works, sometimes it doesn't. Well, I was in Vegas on July 17th, and I didn't like – I loved England's Rose. And if you go back and watch that replay, <laughs> if you don't tell me that horse wasn't five lengths the best and still lost by a nose, uh, this horse was sitting where it says on the, on the far right, lacked room upper, closed fast, does it no justice whatsoever. And this horse was absolutely loaded, nowhere to go. And with about 10 feet, was still in about fifth and finally got clear and just absolutely exploded. Now, the problem is, is I was getting seven to one that day and I singled it. I had a hundred to win on it and I had a $5 pick three closing to it. Um, so let us only say that the, my parents were next to me and the F bombs were flying, but <laughs> anyway, so that is clearly the horse to beat a couple horses to mention in here. You know, I, I never know, maybe maybe Craig does, uh, when these horses come in from France or whatever, I don't know how to place them, uh, you know, how strong the race was. Luck is actually the 9-5 to five favorite. Two things about it. One, Rispoli ends up there. And two, if you go to XBTV, granted, the dogs were out and they weren't, weren't working exactly fast, but Luck actually outworked Bodicita on the turf who is in the yellow ribbon later in the day, who I actually like. So I think luck is very well meant here and looked very comfortable on that August 1st turf work that is on XBTV. Um, those are my clear top two prices, or excuse me, my top two plays. Um, a couple of horses that are interesting. Miss Flawless at 15 to one actually absolutely exploded last time out. Granite, against a little bit easier is in for the tag but the rails were out 30 feet that day riskily does jump off but that horse absolutely flew home and at a price is worth a look the eight horse uh lady noguez if you go back three races because maybe a mile of three eighths mile and a quarter are too long this horse exploded as well with the sormo up and had a nice turn of foot lately lately is only one for 17 on the turf so maybe not on this maybe exotic place and uh, the three horse Zydeco Mama actually just beat the race we were just talking about. Queen Goddess, who was flying late, was semi interesting. First time going long on the turf. So two four by clear. Uh, probably I'll probably just go too deep in here. But the the in that order nine eight and three in your exotics are interesting. Craig looked like uh, Rispoli had uh, two other choices he could have gone with and ended up on Luck. Uh, does that ever factor into your handicapping where a jock has numerous choices in a race? And uh, does that sway you at all or not? Well, absolutely it does. I mean, these uh, these guys only make money if they win races. So, you know, they, they, the trainer shows them or they work the horse out, you know. Absolutely. When they got, they got the choices, I sort of slide over. I said, well, he picked that horse. I mean, yeah, yeah, he wants to win races. I mean, you don't pick the other horse because you want to lose. Sometimes you get tied up in a commitment or something like that and you get – knocked off the ray horse, but that is definitely a uh, consideration. Now in this eighth race, this is my value play and I got, you know, no knock on English Rose, but that's five to two on the line out of the same race, this new heat. Yeah. I know Chappie must've watched the race 10 times, but Tyler Bays, he's problem with Tyler Bays. He's one for 51 right now. I don't know if he's just unlucky or uh, he's not, not riding so good. I'm not an expert on jockeys on how they're doing. But I know I, I watched this horse, uh, and he at twenty to one, at twenty to one today, he had a trip that was unbelievable. He was wide, you know, he went 
20 wide, probably. Yeah, yeah you're not, 20, you're not 20, exactly 20 wide, 20, yeah. 20 wide. Now, so, you know, first time he went uh, back up to a mile, and you, know, you can see the buyer number went to, you know, 78, 82, and uh, he improved. And I think he can do one more step improve. He's, he was in the, he's in the six hole this time, but, uh, you know, still he's going to need the trip. It's only 12 feet, you know, 12 feet rail, so he still has a chance. And the extra distance is not going to hurt this horse going a mile and 16. So a 20 to one, God, I got to, I, I can't let this one go. So I'm going to be, you are correct. You are I'm gonna be, I'll be throwing it. I'll be throwing him in. And, and uh, the other ones, you know, like you mentioned, lady, no the uh, English Rose. And when you get a 20 to one shot, I'll be t- uh, trying to hit the, maybe the trifecta and throwing the two, three, four, and eight. And uh, somewhere the, somewhere the, 20 to one shot new heat will come in second or third and I'll still make some money. Well, uh, that race, uh, certainly, uh, yeah, England's rose. Sometimes Chappie, you know what I, you know what I, I fear is like, uh, you know, he should have won that race. We should have won. And then you go today and he doesn't quite fire back England's rose the way he did that day. Uh, you know, that that's happened. Yeah, that to me many times where, like, I, I don't love the horse as much today. I, you know, it's not yeah, going mean, to be worth the nine to five. Well, but, last race was the wedding and today might be the funeral. You know, right. one, yeah. Uh, yeah, seven to one and lose by a no. So, yep. you know, we're all looking for value. So, right. Yeah. Uh, well, they both, uh, both of your horses ran a seven on the third graph sheets last time out. And uh, I know I love the third graph sheet. So does, uh, so does my man Craig. And, and, uh, yeah. so, Twenty one against uh, five to one. Uh, what did what did Miss Flawless run the last time out? Miss Flawless. Uh, what number is Miss Flawless? A nine. Uh, so they both ran a seven. England's Rose and uh, and Craig's pick, and Miss Flawless uh, ran. Where is Miss Flawless? Ran an eight. So just one number behind. That's the other price with Craig's that I think is interesting. Yeah, right. Because it's a wide open race, wide open. Look at look all the numbers: seven, seven, eight, nine. You know, every everything's close. And now, you know, I'm looking to get twenty to one, and I'm surely not. They're they're not going to bet the the new heat because of the jockey. I mean, one for fifty one. So, on the cold side. All right, race number nine. uh, We're moving to, and this is the best pal, Grade Two. Uh, They're going six furlongs, a nice sprint. You got some nice, uh, nice two-year-olds in there, like Ben on Mookie's in there. Pop a cap, and I, that's usually followed by I'm gonna pop a cap in in some part in of your body. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. But uh, pop a cap is in there as well. I, I like the way Phineas won last time. Thirsty's always undefeated. This is a tough, tough race. Uh, Chappy, how'd you see the best pal? Well, I'm gonna have to get Craig's. Um uh, expertise on the horses coming in. I did not look at the Papa Cap from Gulfstream or any, you know, the Beltara or the Peter Miller uh, from Churchill. I just watched the local horses and just for price and uh, visual replay alone, I actually like Thirsty Always coming from Pleasanton. I like the way this horse um, uh, kick clear, you know, Phineas. Phineas never switched leads late and was against state breads. And, and I think we're going to get a little bit better price on thirsty always. So of the locals, I like thirsty always. And I have not, I have yet to watch the horses coming in from out of town. Craig. I took a look. The three looks uh, legitimate. My, it might be the favorite. He won pretty easy that race. And uh, he just, uh, there was, he is, uh, he is what he is. And, but uh, the other thing was these gun runner horses, if you've noticed, I mean, they've been running. I mean, uh, back east, uh, because who Astemison has a lot of them, Brad Cox, and uh, these uh, these sort of these gun runners will, will be like the two year old sire of the year, I, I, I assume. The horse I'm going with uh, is Risk Believe. Is you know, it's like golfers when the all the golfers are out of the town, which you guys mentioned earlier. You know, the, the big tournaments in the British Open, then they have a tournament back here. Everybody, uh, all the big offers, they're in that tournament there because now they don't have the big dogs to go against, and that it's their payday. And so, uh, you know, it's just like the jockey, which you guys mentioned before. I think restfully, he's going to be on this horse. The uh, closed well, he worked. He worked. Looked like he worked good. I don't know, George. Uh, how did he been working before Phineas? 
Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's got some good good workouts here on the on the workout report. So Phineas uh, uh, has been working has been working well, and and Rispoli picks up the mound since Pratt's out of town. Right, and they paid two hundred thousand. So you know, like the guy always says, uh, they have high expectations for this horse. Yep. And uh, he closed closed well, and uh, hope the you know the going six furlongs is definitely not going to hurt this horse against the rest of them because there is some speed in the race. And he could close, so it's a three four for me. And the four three four three is the four my as my top horse. Put it that way in the night. Uh, bet on Mookie certainly improved a lot from the first race to the next uh, race. Uh, it comes in even though it was on the turf. It was the best the best last race thoroughgraph number, uh, but it was a grass number. And uh, Peter Miller is certainly uh, on fire. The other day he won three in one day. It's uh, he's just a trainer that knows knows how to win. Uh, race number 10 is a grade two, the yellow ribbon handicap. And, uh, this one, uh, they're going a mile and a 16, a, uh, another a big field. We've seen a lot of big fields at, uh, Del Mar. And of course, everybody loves betting big fields. Uh, Craig, how'd you see race number 10, the yellow ribbon? Oh, just a side note on the, I'm still anti on the ninth, on the ninth race, Ben on Mookie, only because he's the rail. The rail's still been bad going six furlongs or seven furlongs. And to take a short price on a horse, uh, so that's why I also lean to Phineas because uh, I'm uh, against the rail on that horse. Now the, we're in the 10th race. Yes. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, this is the 10th race. This is my exacta box bonanza. I am uh, – the race, uh, a lot of these horses came out of us, that maximum race, uh, May 31st race. And watching that race, the three front – there was like three front runners in the race and three closers. All three closers came back uh, and ran maximum rate. They, they just passed everybody. So it just seems it's going to be a different ride, different ride uh, way they're going to ride this race because keep off our stars with the lead and – and another, uh, who was the other horse on the lead is Raymond Secret and Charmaine. I don't know, you know, that horse, you know, always on the lead. So Correct. I think they might race a little different. So that's why I'm going with uh, a three horse exact a box with the five, seven, and eight. The five, seven, eight, five is third race back. Um, five and seven both ran same race, you know, right down to each other. They're both 12 to one again. I lose Bravo over the on the seven horse, but uh, the price is the price. He's won five races. The sevens won five races, so they're not shy to the winner's circle. They know where the winner's circle is, and they're both, you know, it should be there. You usually see their peak performance the third race back. Now you take Princess Grace, and I think that uh, I, I watched that horse and Praxi won. He won easier, and, and I, here's another key. He won without Lasix that time, first time on Lasix. And you look at those workouts, you know, I, I didn't see the workouts, but obviously they're bullet workouts. And uh, she, she, uh, she's coming up the race. He's won four out of five races, only one loss one time, but I ran second. And the turf uh, is no problem for the horse. And the price is eight to one. So that's my long shot exact box is five, seven, eight. All right, Chappie, uh, Princess Grace. This is her sixth different racetrack in six lifetime starts. And, man, uh, she has won four out of five, and the other race is second. Yet she's eight to one, a, a gigantic price on a jockey that looks revitalized in Kent de Sormo. Um, uh, I, I don't know, Princess Grace, all those bullet works. She's uh, won four out of five in a second. Uh, this is, you know, every track she goes to she loves. Uh, and yet she's eight to one. Yeah, she's, uh, you know, lightly raced, well-traveled, obviously, like you said, DeSormo has found the fountain of youth. Uh, it's just a really tough field. I, I, I've, I've gone over this race a million times, and I've, I've come up with a million different ways of handicapping the race. And you, you on paper, you would think Charmaine's me and Ramundo's secret are the speed, yet they're both trained by Phil D'Amato, so you would assume that that uh, Rumundo will take back a little bit. Uh, I just can't come up with a pace scenario for this. I, I, I'm, I will be 
hopefully have the all ball in this race because I can't <laughs> make your heads. And I watched every race of every horse last night. Um, I always go back. I, I, you know, you get on one horse and you have a soft spot for it. Uh, Boda Cheetah has always been kind of a horse I've chased. And I think uh, Boda Cheetah is a little bit better um, at a mile and a 16th than a mile and an eighth. And I think the horse maybe needed that race off of the layoff last time out. And I it was actually down in the paddock, believe it or not, when la, over the weekend. And uh, Trevor McCarthy had a horse running with Mike Pipey. So I was listening in to the strategy. And I was very impressed with Trevor McCarthy and the way he read the form, knew exactly was a horse he'd never been on before. He, he does a lot of homework, and uh, not that this means anything in this race, but I, I was just very impressed by him. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spread here, but I'm also make some plays with Boda Cheetah at 6-1. to one. I think the price is worth it, and i got to give this horse one more shot, and I think I should get every bit of that 6-1 to one as well. Speaking of Trevor McCarthy, he's going to have the uh, probable favorite in the finale, uh, uh, Chappie with Sweet and uh, Cheeky. Uh, Mark Glatt just claimed this one and certainly uh, looked good, but now drops off the claim from 50000 to 20000 Do you see that as a positive? Do you see it as a negative? How do you view something like that when if I buy something for 50000 and willing to sell it for twenty, I usually see that as a negative, but uh, he certainly has got a class. That's always been a conundrum for me when they claim somebody for fifty and are willing to to give them up the next race for 20. How do you view that, Chappie? You know, it's it's very difficult to say. Most 90% of the time I view that as a negative. Um, the only time I give it a second look would probably, I'm just speaking from the West Coast, but and I don't know the owners, but it's nice to know them. It's amazing how many people will drop because they want to win at Del Mar, period. Mm. And... Um, that 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 factors in. People like to be there and win, and it, I think it depends on who the owners are, what the status are, what you know. But it's something to win a race at Del Mar and be in that winner's circle. I'm assuming Saratoga is probably the same way. Um, Craig, you've looked at this race more than I have. What are your thoughts on that? And then what are your thoughts on who you like in this race? Well, like George said, there's there's a lot of question marks. I, I really don't have a good feeling on this race. I was just going to use as many horses as I can because I'm going to play a pick four in case I get lucky in the first few races uh, and, or pick five. Whatever, no, I'll play a pick four, the eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And I'm just trying to take as many as I can because what George mentioned, it that scares me. And then you look at the other horse, uh, the other favorites, uh, what is Sunny something? Sweet uh, Sunny. That horse that hasn't, hasn't run. He was uh, two to five, two to five last time. Uh, Nowhere in the other horse of the 12 horse. And then they all look like, you know, if you take out, if, they, if you've never seen the horses all run, they all look like the, they have a chance. And, and, but it's scary. It's a scary race for me. And I don't have a good, good thought for it. It's wide, it's wide open. Another good race. Another good day at Del Mar, huh, Georgie? Another Tough great day. At, a lot of horses. Good day at Del Mar. Uh, all right. Well, I want to thank Craig for being on the show. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you on, and we got we covered a lot of, a lot more stuff than I thought we were going to cover. We covered uh, three different uh, days at uh, two different racetracks, and uh, certainly uh, with the express bed giving you uh, that free ten dollars towards the play at uh, uh, Monmouth. Monmouth, uh, that's certainly yeah. <laughs> going to be good. As soon as we get, uh, get off here, I'm going to be putting in my pick five tickets. I like All it. Right, that sounds great. All right, thank everybody for watching. We'll be back next week with another guest here. And uh, Chappy, uh, great to have you on the show. Thanks, buddy. I had a great time. Craig, it's always great to have you. And uh, let's play like champions today. And I will never forget. The last time, I think it was the last time, whenever you were on that we laughed so hard. That was the funniest I honestly, show ever. I will yeah. never forget that show. And I, I, yeah. I that, that was, was in the show. archives now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, have a great day. Good luck today at uh, Delmar and over there at uh, Mama.